Um, well, oh, okay, got it. Um, well, thank you guys so much for joining me this afternoon um, from wherever you are. Um, my name is Shannon and I'm going to be your instructor today. And so a little bit about me before we get started. Um, I've been using Copic markers for about uh, 12 years now, and um, I really enjoy using markers as a medium. There's a lot you can do with them, and we're going to show that a little bit in this My First Copic set today. And um, so, yeah, I guess I'll just get right to it and show what's inside this set. I'm going to open up my chat just in case uh, anybody has any questions. Uh, Nate is also um, going to be in there answering some questions too, or he'll kind of snag me in a area where we have time and ask me questions as well. So this is the set that we're focusing on today. This is the My First Copic set. Um, I just marked my initials here in the corner. That's just something I like to do with sets. <laughs> but yeah, so this is it. We've got uh, 10 different markers and two different multi-liner pens. And so this set has the Copic Chow inside. I know a lot of people know about the sketch, but this is the Chow. And it actually has the same two nibs as the sketch with a super brush and the medium broad. So it works the same, just a few minor differences. Um, this marker comes in 180 colors versus your full 358. Um, and it holds a little bit less ink here in the barrel of the marker, so you might have to refill it a little bit more, but they still work the same. I own a pretty decent amount of both markers, um, so I just want to mention that difference. And so here is our set, and if you kind of <laughs> open it, you'll start to see these kind of papers and booklets inside, so I'll go ahead and grab those, pull those out. And what you see inside is a um, kind of technique guidebook. So this is something I'll be referring to the whole class. And then in like a prepackaged uh, sleeve, you see some, uh, well, I have this landscape right here, but all you have to do is kind of tear away the plastic. And what you have inside is this landscape kind of marketplace scene. You have this cute little girl here with the bird. And then you have this, um, like, let's try with Copic sheets, it's blank. And then after that, you have eight different sheets of marker paper. This is our premium bond paper, which works really well for Copic markers and um, pens as well. So you got eight, eight blank sheets too. And so I will bring it back to this one. And this guy is where I will start today. And um, on my desk, I have a finished example of this. So I'll use that as well to kind of guide us as we move along. But the My First Copic set is great for any beginner to Copic markers. So whether you, um, you know, are intrigued by Copic because it's, you know, has a huge range of colors or you like anime or manga, and this is a very popular choice for coloring that kind of art, or if you just want to, you know, learn how to render with markers, this is a great tool for that. And this set is fantastic. I definitely recommend it. Um, you can color so much with it as well. So let me kind of put this off to the side and get my workspace station. I'm going to kind of push my markers out so it's easier <laughs> for me to grab. And then I've got my two multi-liner pens here on the end, a black and a sepia. And so we'll get started here. Lots of little sheets. But yeah, when you open the My First Copic Technique guidebook, the first thing you see is kind of what I just introduced. You know, what is Copic, the two different nibs. So this booklet, I mean, I've never seen this in a Copic set before, so I really, really like it. And it does explain a lot of the questions that people commonly have about Copic. It also gives you more information on the medium broad side and what you can do with it as well as the super brush side, which is a little bit more flexible. This is a stiffer nib, and this will give you um, a greater variety of widths, line widths, it even says that right there. And then the next page is where we start to see um, the sheet in front of me. So it's basically just guiding you through the nibs. So this first one is the medium broad nib, and it's great for um, applying with an even layer of color. So that's just what it's known for since it's a stiff nib. You don't have to worry about pushing or pulling the marker pressure. 
Um, and then it can give you a different types of texture. It definitely can give you that typical marker texture, especially if you color it kind of aggressively versus our super brush which is more so the nib famous for its blending capabilities. And so I will kind of I'm going to tuck this top part a little bit under my laptop. Um, maybe actually put my markers on top of it so it stays. But essentially, I have practiced on this sheet um, different ways to apply both different nibs. So I'll start at the top on my blank sheet of paper, and I'll lift it up too as we work. But um, the guidebook uses the blue color. So I went ahead and did that. And the blue in this set is B00, which is frost blue. It's named on the back of the marker. If you have, if you're familiar with Copic Sketch, it's an oval shape marker and it'll list the color on the cap. But for Chow, there's a few physical differences and this is one of them, but you can still see the color code in two places and the name in one. Um, so I'll use this uh, blue marker for the medium broad and this nib, I'll show this, um, is a very stiff nib as you can see. You can apply the ink on this long side or if you turn it, you can apply it from this kind of thinner side as well. If you want to get really thin lines, you can use just this part right there, um, the very short part. So there's a lot of different ways you can hold this to get a different angle. Um, but I will just kind of go up and down just like this to fill in the square. So I'm gonna use the fattest side and just go up and down. And now I've got a little bit of space left. So I'll use that thin side. But all you do on this kind of first sheet is just practice applying the color. So I went up and down. And now for me personally, I will turn the page and I'm going to use the thinner side of the nib, this top angle. The first one, I just held it kind of flat like this to fill in the triangle since it's a more difficult shape. So I'm gonna hold my um, marker kind of tilted so I get that uh, shorter side. And I will kind of weave in this shape as well in the triangle and fill that in. For me as well, um, it helps to work quicker so that the ink doesn't dry too much. You start to get that streaky marker look when you let the ink sit for too long and then you work back in. Um, and so I like to work as quick as I can, if that's possible. Um, and then for the circle, I think what I'm gonna try with the medium broad nib is this kind of scribbling technique. So I'm gonna go in short, quick little circular motions like that. Um, just because I've, it's the shape is a circle. So I'm gonna try and mimic the shape. And I'm doing little circular motions very quick and kind of dotting in any other areas that maybe weren't as even. So this is a light color. It may be hard to see, but I'm gonna hold it as close as I can. So for the square shape, I just colored up and down. And then I did that as well for the triangle, but over here, I colored in small circles. And you can kind of tell maybe a little bit um, any of these techniques to apply your color to the page works just fine. Typically, I go kind of up and down or use the flicking technique. That's just me. Um, but everybody has a different approach, so feel free to do, what, to do what's comfortable for you. Okay, so down on the booklet, the super brush is using a pink color. So I'm going to mimic that as well. I'm going to use RV02, and I'll use the super brush which um, you can also easily tell in case you don't wanna look at the icons, um, you could tell by this gray stripe right here. Also, this is very convenient for me, um, the notch is right here that you can see. This notch is there to help prevent it from rolling right off the table. Um, if you push it off with a lot of momentum, obviously that notch isn't going to stop it, but um, the notches are great and definitely comes in handy to make them not roll off. So for the square, I'm gonna go up and down again kind of holding at um, not completely upright, but I'm not completely flat. I'm kind of a 45 degree angle here with my hand and just moving up and down. And I am right-handed. <laughs> and so I will kind of turn my page again to fill in the triangle. I find that this works best for me to kind of work with that long angle and go from there. So that one fills in quickly. 
And then the circle, I'm gonna do those small circular motions again with my wrist, going from the outside into the middle. And this sheet is definitely great, again, for a, someone who's never ever used COVID before. And I really wish I had this set when I was 13. <laughs> A lot of trial by error I had to make in middle school when I first got my COVIDs. But um, you can kind of tell this is a darker color. Um, so you can tell I had to layer a little bit more pigment to get that smooth color with the circular motion versus this looks a little bit lighter with the kind of up and down motion. So again, um, either way is totally fine. I'm just showing different ways to add color to the page. Next, I'm going to show um, layering with the same color. Um, I see a question in the chat. Can we see a label for that one again? You mean the, the color or the marker? I'll hold that up. This is RV02, if that was what the question was. <laughs> and then this is sugar almond pink. The name is always on the back for chow. So that, that is that marker. I think that color went through. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, no, you're welcome. Um, so layering the same color. Um, this is a great technique and this, I use this all the time. I've been using this since I was 13 and the same color, let's use uh, YG23. So this is that really bright lime green in the set. Make sure my color, camera focuses. Yeah, so this is new leaf, that's what it says. And um, because this is a kind of boxy shape, I'm gonna use the medium broad. And I'm going to turn my paper. This is, I'll scoop this up a little bit so we have more space. So I'm gonna turn my paper, this just works for me. And I'm gonna fill the whole thing in. So I'm gonna go down and up. And for me, it's about four strokes. So I went down and up twice. And so um, I think I said this earlier, it's easier to get that marker streaky look with the medium broad side because it's stiffer, the stiffer nib. So you can kind of tell it's a little streaky, but um, it doesn't really matter because it's a practice sheet and we'll get the point across of like. Um, as well. Yeah, just because um, it's easier to get that look with um, So I'm going to go over where it says twice. There we go. Is my sound out? Am I okay? I see that someone said my sound went out. It's back? Okay. Um, so yeah, there's the second. And I'm just gonna let this dry for a little bit. And you can tell on the back. <laughs> and again, it's not, didn't bleed onto my piece of foam board. But um, on the back, you can tell I layered this twice and this one once. And so you'll imagine this will get pretty saturated on the back when I layer it for a third time. So I'll do that real quick. Kind of up, down, up, down. And there we go. So I'll turn it. This is YG23, one time, two times, and layered three times. So with one marker, you can really pack in a lot of punch which is super awesome. And again, you can easily see on the back how many times you layer, which is really cool as well. This premium bond paper, I will say, does handle a lot of alcohol ink. Of course, if you're sitting here and scribbling in a lot of color for like a minute, you know, it's probably gonna bleed through completely. But um, as far as marker paper goes, this is really, really nice stuff. Um, the last part of this page is mixing two colors. So I'm going to mix the blue and the pink and that's what I did over here. And we got this really pretty purple. Um, and so, yeah, I will do that now. So we've, we're grabbing RV02. Sorry, my camera's not focusing on it. And I'll use the medium broad again, just cause they're, you know, square shapes. And so I'll color the whole thing in. I'm not pressing too hard on my paper. The ink, especially when the markers are new, should flow out very easily. You'll start to tell when a marker is starting to get dry if the tip of the nib kind of looks white or just really pale. And so the great thing about Copic is all of their markers are refillable with Copic ink. And so if they do get dry, you don't have to throw them away, just get the refill ink and over time it will save you a lot of money. I still have the same set of sketching grays that I've had since I was 14 and I'm, you know, it's 11 years later. So. Definitely very good, very highly recommended. 
especially as a kid, you know, I was like, I'm going to use these forever. And I actually have. So, okay, now I'm going to layer the whole thing in with B double zero. Make sure that kind of lays flat. Put that there. And voila. So we've created a nice kind of pale purple, like a dusty purple, by um, layering the blue with the pink. And so that is kind of a result of mixing two colors. You can do that with a bunch of different colors in this set. Um, if you want like a drastic result, obviously blue and pink, um, or you could say red, those are two primary colors and they're going to make a secondary color, which is purple. Um, if I mix, say, this yellow with this pink, I'm gonna get probably an, an orangey, an orange type effect. So I can do, I'll just scribble a little here in my super brush, a little bit of yellow. This one's RV10, right on top of it. You know, I'll give you like, it's like a dusty pink, but kind of orange a little bit. So yeah, you can do a lot of different blends, which is nice. And you can blend more than just two colors. Okay. If the colors dry, will they still mix? Yes, that is true. Um, so this is, I'll wait a few more seconds to have this dry. And then I can add like, I don't know, green, G00 on top. And it'll still mix. It's going to be a bizarre color because I mixed like a yellow, pink, and a green, but you can keep layering. Um, it's not like, uh, it's not permanent, I guess. So if you even finish a piece of art and then put it aside for a month and go back to it, you can still kind of reactivate the alcohol ink and add on to it if you want to. Um, if you have a very thin or cheap paper, there's only so much layering you can do versus if you have a paper that's made for markers, then obviously you can have much more layering. Um, yeah, that is that first. Let me see, any more questions? Okay, does one color stain the other marker nib and then transfer? Um, I've never really had a staining issue before. Um, the colors that would stain most likely is probably your yellows, um, especially if you're blending them in with like greens or other dark colors. But if your nib does get stained, um, I would just take a piece of cardstock or marker paper and scribble it out because it probably will get removed naturally. If the nib is more of a permanent stain, then I would recommend getting the replaceable nibs um, just so you can kind of start fresh with a new nib, which Copic does have. So I've only had to do that one time with a yellow color um, in my 11 plus years of using Copic. So I've never had a big issue with staining. Um, but yeah, that is the first kind of uh, area here. And then following the guidebook, I'm gonna bring these ladies out next. So I'm gonna flip to the next page. Oh, actually, excuse me, I jumped one step. So we've got a few different things I wanna show real quick. Creating a pattern, we've got a super brush and a medium broad. I actually just doodled this really quickly um, before the class on a, a scrap sheet of paper. But basically um, we can create new colors by layering, which is what I showed right before this. And this is just a plaid pattern. I can show how to do that real quick, as well as blending two colors together. So I will do this next in the booklet. Again, just trying to put a little weight there on my eraser. And I am going to grab one of these blank sheets in the set. We've got eight of them. Okay, so here's a little blank sheet. Let me see if I can get this all to fit on the screen. Perfect. Okay, so I'm going to use the same colors that we see here. Again, just kind of sticking with the guidebook. So I've got the B00, the RV02, and I'm going to use the yellow. So these are kind of a pastel version of your primary colors. Um, this pink can qualify as your red, the blue and the yellow. So those are primaries. And um, we can easily make some secondary colors 
by following this little dot pattern. So because they're circles, I'm going to use the super brush nib. And I'm just going to kind of circle in. Maybe I'll just draw the circle and fill it in. I'm not going to do much. I'm going to just do like three. Okay, and then I'll add yellow. I'm just going to kind of layer right on top. So I'm just picking some white spaces here and just making sure I overlap these circles a little bit because I want to see what the result is when I when I layer on top. There we go. And then I'll do the blue. And this is more of a darker color. So you'll really start to see those purples. And when I overlap this with the yellow, it'll look a little bit green, which is exactly what would happen. That's when you make a secondary color. So I'm just adding these in kind of randomly. And that's a general uh, gist of what you see here in the booklet. So I'm just kind of adding in circles and making sure I can see uh, kind of what those blends will result in with the color. Um, next, I'm just going to show this basic kind of plaid pattern, kind of at random. <laughs> so I'll use the medium broad. This is a great tool to use for plaids or any kind of pattern like this. And I'll use the fatter end first. And I'll just kind of try and make the spacing between these lines equal. And then I'll use the yellow. Maybe I'll add two lines going the other way, more horizontal. And then next I'll add that blue, maybe the thinner line. So I'll hold the marker. Um, let me make sure this is focused. The kind of like this rather than this. So I'll hold it at the different nib width and do a thinner line. And maybe I'll do thinner lines going vertically as well, alternating with the pink. And I'll lift this. I know my yellow looks kind of pale, but that's just another way you can make a basic kind of plaid pattern. And then I want to show this little character down here. His little hairdo is blended. So I will do that with the two greener colors. We've got a yellow green and a green. So I will blend the YG23 with G00. And I'm going to use the flicking technique, which we haven't done yet, but it's very well known. So I'm going to start. Um, I'll show two ways, starting with the darker color first and then starting with the lighter color first. So this booklet is just showing you the light color first, but I wanna show both um, just as options. And so I will actually, let me take a pencil first and kind of draw two little boxes. So I know my perimeters roughly. <laughs> and so I will go with the dark first and flick the color up a little bit past halfway. And basically this flicking technique, you apply more pressure at the bottom and you lift your marker as you move your way up. And then pretty quickly, I will follow up with the G00 and I will bleed this, or bleed this color into that YG23. And I'm gonna wait a second. <laughs> And then from inside the darker color, I'm gonna flick up. And I'm gonna add another layer. So this is going to get kind of dark, um, not overly dark, but I'm definitely adding lots of layers. So this is my second layer of YG23. And I think I've added three or four of the G00. And I'm gonna go back yet again, G00 from inside that area with YG23 and push the color up. This top area is a little bit light, but lots of layering is involved to make it very smooth. And so 
there we go. And that is the dark color applied first and then the light. But I applied the lighter color way more often than I did the dark. Um, so yeah, that's one way that's dark first. And now I will do the light color first. And I'll keep it in the same direction. So I'll put the light one up here as well, just so we can, it's more comparable. But yeah, so I will add the light one in, flicking that color into my cattywampus rectangle. <laughs> And then I will use the darker YG and flick that up. But again, since we're going to have to layer over this a few times, um, I'm not going super far up into this space. And then back with the lighter again, just like the booklet's saying. And I will flick yet again. And then I'll go from further up. If there's no uh, like true um, calculation per se, it's all about what you think is best. Um, like right now I'm pretty much overlaying all of YG23 with this lighter color so that it looks more even. And if you want, you can even use little circles. If the lines seem too harsh from the flipping technique, those little circles can really help. So it looks a little bit different than the other one. There we go. So this one, I applied the dark first, then the light, um, and then I kind of went back and forth to different blends. This one I did light first, then the dark. So it does turn out a little bit darker because um, I had to add more layers, but um, yeah, either one works. Uh, either way is fine. Let's look at the back. <laughs> Both of these are pretty saturated. Uh, I would definitely say this one where I applied the dark first is a little less um, bleed through. Again, not onto my surface, just on the back of the card, the paper, but that is kind of blending two different colors together and um, like a, a mid-tone to a light color, I would say. So yeah, that's that page in the booklet. Um, do we have any other questions in the chat? We're not seeing any pop up. Um, but I'm going to um, skip this part just because I, I want to make sure I get to all these different points. And I'm just going to go into um, the page actually with the girl because she's a little bit easier to color than the marketplace one. So I want to keep that one to the end, um, towards the end. But I'm going to um, color this girl that's included in the, in the set. And so this is my version of coloring her. I kind of stuck to what I saw in the book as an example, because this is a pretty good size reference uh, when you look through the when you look through the booklet. But um, I actually applied that uh, technique of like making a pattern into her stock into her stockings, excuse me, into her socks. So um, earlier when we did that, I on this sheet. I just applied it to her stockings. So I thought it was kind of cute. Um, but yeah, this is what we're gonna do next is to show kind of how to do some basic uh, skin tones and hair and yeah. So I'll put that here. Um, and then I guess I can kind of put this off to the side. I'm gonna take out the rest of my contents here since half of my markers are on my table already. And I'll set that aside. Okay, and then I'll put this here as well. Okay, so the first thing we see if we're just following along with the booklet, it just says hair, clothes, skirt, skin, eyes, and the bird. Um, so it does list you off some like um, options and uh, I don't know, just suggestions, I guess, for those areas. So that is really nice. And it has it fully colored, which is awesome. Also like the step-by-step -step up here, which is great. So definitely, again, very good tool. I wish I would have had this when I was in high school and middle school first starting to make art. It definitely would have come in handy. Um, so yeah, I will start with kind of the, the hair is what it says. So it says overlay Y00 with E00. So I'll start with that. This is Y00. And luckily these sheets aren't super large. It's always easier to color 
especially when you're new to Copic in smaller spaces. Those big areas to start to shade can get kind of intimidating. Okay, with E00 color I have not used yet. And so I'll just overlay with the yellow so it gives a little bit more of like a, a honey blonde effect, not just yellow. So, but again, you can just use the yellow if you want. You can make your hair pink too, doesn't matter. So there we go. Just kind of overlaid those two. The clothing, it says add some shadows with the blue violet zero zero, which we can do. Um, and I guess I'll, since it says BV zero zero, I can use that color next. I noticed some purples in her shirt and her skirt. So we can do that. And um, she has some highlights that are shown in the booklet. And I did that over here with the pink, so we can follow suit of that as well. So yeah, you can just kind of fill um, this line art in. You can, depending on how comfortable you are, you can fill it in directly as it says in the booklet. Um, I'm kind of going off of that, kind of not. <laughs> um, there's a few spaces where I'll do my own thing, but it's definitely a great tool. Um, definitely makes for a great gift. I would have loved this. Um, still do actually really enjoy it. So there's kind of just, sorry, my fingernails. Um, I left a white space up in these sleeves um, following the example in the booklet. I also left some white in the ruffles of her shirt because I want to add some pink, um, maybe uh, the RV10 to it. So that's really great. And then in the skirt, um, in the example in the booklet, it has a plaid pattern, very similar to what I showed quickly over here, this plaid of overlaying different colors. So we can do that onto the skirt. And because it has like a little bend, a little bit of a, a breeze or some kind of bend to the skirt and the fabric, we need to draw lines that follow suit to the organic shape of the fabric. So I will try to do that here and um, I'm using the super brush nib and I'm trying to make my lines thinner at the waist and wider down here where it flares out um, so that the stripe looks more realistic. And so here I have like four of them. So I'll try to mimic that and make four as well. One, two, kind of in between these lines. Over here. Perfect. Maybe that area as well. And then let's see, the example maybe shows like a brown, but I used a hot pink over here. Um, so yeah, maybe I'll go with RV02. And now I'll try and add some of the um, horizontal lines using that super brush. And I'm, I'm trying to bend to the skirt and the breeze of the fabric. Might not be 100% exact, but that looks nice to me. Lift that up real quick. So I did um, purple lines going down, pink lines going across. Uh, maybe I'll add some yellow in here as well. So I'll do Y double zero and add some yellow going across. And I honestly just like that as it is. So I might just keep it. Um, next, I'm actually going to color in um, her skin tones real quick. And I'll use E00 for that. And I will make sure I leave a little bit of white around her eyes, but I will fill this in real quick. There we go. And then fill in the arm working in a up and down pretty quick motion. And then just fill in her kneecaps. Um, if you want, you can also make her stockings kind of like see-through or you can have color her entire leg with the peach, uh, what is this, cotton pearl color. <laughs> and then maybe add like, I don't know, blue on top of it. So it's, you know, has a little bit of that tone underneath it. Um, but I'm gonna make it into that fun pattern because I just like that kind of bubbly different look. 
And I'm gonna do that next. So I'll start with the yellow and just draw in some circles spontaneously throughout her stockings. Trying to leave space for two more colors. There we go. And then I'll use RV02 and have a little bit of overlap. I don't want to completely cover up those pinks. And you can make the circles way smaller too if you want to leave more um, kind of room to breathe, but it's all personal preference. I'm even just kind of dabbing the uh, super brush nib because if you put a lot of pressure onto it and it lays completely down, it will make a pretty good circle actually, just organically. So there we go. Some stockings added. She's looking pretty cute. <laughs> and then um, I'm gonna fill in her shoes. I use the darkest brown, E33. And just fill that in really quick. And if you want to make more contrast, like for shadows, you can add E33, like right under her hairline maybe, maybe like right there on her wrist. Um, and like a little bit under this kind of skirt area where her uh, kneecaps are. And then, or maybe like right under her chin as well. And then you can go back with E00 and make sure you shade over those areas a few times to lessen the contrast and to smoothen out the gradation. Just gives it more extreme contrast. There we go. And then we can make her eyes blue, green, brown, whatever you want. Um, I might just add blue in there in the space where the eye is. There we go. Uh, maybe just I'll give her a blue belt too while we're at it. Doesn't have to follow the booklet exactly. And then the bird is a combination of um, YG23, G00, and the Y00. So I'll add that in pretty quickly. And then I might actually um, just go right into showing you how to do the marketplace next. Oh, <laughs> open the wrong side of the marker. There we go. And last but not least, the yellow color. So we go from a dark to a light. Here's what we've got so far. So plenty of different ways to use these 10 colors. Um, we used them to color this cute little girl here. And then uh, we can fill in the little accessories around her with whatever you like. Um, yeah, this is one example. And it follows relatively close to the example here in the booklet. Again, I made some of my own changes. It doesn't have to be exact, but that's why this is here and that's why this booklet is so helpful. Okay, I will move on to the uh, marketplace one, which has a lot more details in it, which is why I saved it for a little bit later. Um, I actually have one piece and um, partially finished because I wanted to show what like a work in progress would look like. Um, down in here, we use similar blends to what I just showed in that bird. Um, the darker green to the G00 to the Y00. Um, over here, I combined it a pink with the yellow. Um, I used the same uh, greens there. I colored in the sky pretty flat and quickly with B00. And I turned my page to do that. Um, what I wanna show next is how to fill in this kind of cobblestone street look. And this is actually the art that's included on the front of the set, which is super awesome. You get to actually color it. Um, so I'm gonna do the cobblestone street. And let me flip, oh, it's on the right page, okay. Yeah, so if you look at the picture, I'm trying to follow this along pretty well. 
Um, we have lots of purples fading into the C2, which is cool gray number two. So I will do that next and show you how I get that effect. So let's see, I'll start with the BV00 because that one's a little bit darker um, than the cool gray. And what I'm gonna do here, where's my little scrap sheet of, or demo sheet. What's super neat about the super brush nib is that you can also make different shapes with it too. So if I hold it down at an angle, you'll get this like um, petal kind of shape. So that's kind of that petal shape. Um, and I'm going to use the side of the super brush nib to make something similar to that, kind of like an oval. So I'm just gonna add a few examples here. So I wanna achieve this kind of look, the oval, but not completely flat. If you want to make cute little flower petal designs or anything like that, using the side of a super brush nib is super helpful for that. Um, but I want to get these little pebbly type oval looks. So that's what I'm going to do for the cobblestones. So on this sheet, I will um, just start to do that from the back to the front. And um, things are typically darker in the background and they're a little bit lighter in the foreground. So that's why in this example here, it looks like that darker to light. So I will mimic that. And so when I add these dots here in the back, I'm not leaving much white space, if any. <laughs> and then as I move my way forward, I will start to make more space between all of these marks. And I'll also try and make them look a little bit larger as well. Not much you can do when there's, you know, the super brush nib is relatively small, but I'm just trying to leave a little bit of space for some white and for the cool gray, which I will add next. Are there any uh, questions in the chat or anyone have any questions so far? I know I'm burning through a lot really quickly, but there's a lot you can do with this set. Okay, so I've got um, cool gray two. Let me see if the camera will focus. Yep, there he is, C2. So I'll use this one next. And again, closer together in the background because that's what colors are darker in the back. And then as we move forward, I will um, make sure that they're spaced out apart a little bit more. And if you want, you can add like um, blue to this as well. It doesn't have to be just the gray and the purple. Okay. There we go. Um, so that's kind of adding in those pebbles. We've got, um, Let's see, purple in these shapes right here. So I'll do that next. And it looks like in the example, they just color with only purple, but I might add some pink just to show some variety. So I'm trying to add the shadow now, the darker part. There we go. And then I'll add, let's see, RV02, kind of the brighter pink, and I'll layer on top. Not all of it completely, but a decent amount. One more here. There we go. Maybe add a little bit more pink. I'll layer it again over by these apples. And then we Jen, got we've got a question from Yvonne. Yvonne wants to say, can you please show the front of the package of the set when you get a chance? Sure, yes. I just put it off to the side because it has a reflective you know, packaging. Um, but yeah, that's the front. And again, it's the same art that I'm coloring right now. Um, I do that, that's my initials, so that's Sharpie. But um, but yeah, that's the front of the package. Mm -hmm. 
and the back basically shows the contents and everything that I'm showing you right now. So there we go. Um, yeah, but for these kind of carrots, I want to make like an oranger color, an orange color. So I'm going to add um, yellow with pink. And so I'm going to shade all of this in with the yellow. Oh, I'm actually going to color in this kind of melon shape up here with some yellow. Okay, and then I'll go with a lighter pink, which is RV10. And kind of just go with the bottom area and work my way up of each carrot. This does give kind of a peachier orange, but it still looks good. And then I'm just going to add this pink up in that shape as well. I'm going to wait a second for those carrots to kind of the ink to dry. And then I'll add another layer just along the bottom. There we go. So I just want to show this work in progress. I've got, so all of these green areas up in here is a combination of YG23, G00, and Y00. Um, down in here, I combined BV00 with RV02. And to make those carrots right there, I layered um, Y00 with RV10. And I've got these earth tone blends right here, which is E33 and E00. Um, the same colors, like the tanner colors I used to color the girl. Um, and then I've got these cobblestones colored in. And I wanna show kind of how I color in that cabbage as well. Um, I think in the example, they're using E00 and Y00. So I will mimic that. And um, E00 is a little bit darker, so I will put that towards the bottom, and then I'll put the yellow on the top. There we go. And I'm just going to show just a little bit more since um, I do want to show some other options of what you can do with this set. Because there's way more you can do with it than just what you see here. Actually, Shannon, two things real quick. First off, can you show the purple marker? Someone wanted to see that, that one right there. Someone wanted to see which color that was. There we <laughs> Make go. Sure it focuses. Yeah, I think this one is Mauve Shadow. That's the name of it. BV00. And also mm -hmm. Patty wanted to see uh, the blank side or the blank version of the marketplace image. Do you have that line work available to see side by side? Yes. There we go. Can you actually hold those up a little closer? Yeah. Thank you very much. Well, I'm gonna drop it down a little bit, so. There we go, there that's good. Go. Yeah, and again, um, the guidebook does kind of teach you this and shows you. I know on our social media, we've shared um, some more information about this set as well. And the reason I wanted to end on this line art is because um, this one's a little bit more difficult because of all the details going on. And basically by coloring the girl before this, I kind of learned some different techniques as well. Um, kind of like this dotting effect and blending colors together. So as a progression standpoint goes, I would definitely color, you know, start with this one. And then when you feel comfortable with that, then coloring the girl and all of her little accessories around her. And then lastly, I would color this one. That's just my opinion. Even though in the booklet, um, this one is listed before the girl, um, I just found her easier to draw, I mean, easier to color and took less time. But yeah, and then after that, um, it tells you kind of how to illustrate a little character using a pencil first and going over it with the multiliner pen. Um, and it tells you a little bit about the pen and the paper that's in the set. Um, something that I wanna show really quick because um, I know doodling is super fun. Does anyone else need to see this before I move it aside? I don't think so, so I will slide it. Okay, and then I'll bring out this sheet again. 
and just do a little doodling. And then if I need another one, I'll bring another sheet out. But essentially, like this shows little characters, but you can do anything with these multi-liner pens. So this one, oh, I covered it with the cap, <laughs> excuse me. This one's 0.3, it also says it right up here. Yeah, and so it also has, this is black and this one is sepia. So this one's really good for outlining like uh, neutral compositions or skin tones or things like that. Um, and these two pens come inside this set. So you get 10 markers with this set and then you get these two pens as well. And this is just the last thing included in the booklet. So I wanted to mention it real quick. Um, so you can, you know, doodle and add the multi-liner pen first. I'm just gonna do like a flower and a basic leaf shape. And then you can color on top, Oops, excuse me. So I'll use this kind of purple color and it should not blend with your Copic. So once the ink is actually dry, you have to wait a little bit, but it won't smudge with your Copic markers and that's what makes it so great. Um, let me do this leaf. Just kind of shade that in real quick. But um, I definitely like these. The black doesn't fade over time. Um, so yeah, you can outline, you can doodle, and then color with your Copic, and it's not going to bleed. You can even just make art strictly with the multi-liner pen. You don't, you know, have to use color if you don't want to. But it's very easy. And I'll show maybe in this area right here. Same thing with the sepia. So I'll just draw another little flower shape. Maybe like a little tulip or something as well. Um, and a leaf. I'll just stick with my kind of generic nature stuff. <laughs> and so I'll wait a little bit for that to dry. And then let's say I want to color in that flower with the pink. Oh, wrong hit. So I'll just shade that in. Nothing's going to smudge. It's very reliable. So definitely love that. <laughs> Where's my, there it is, lighter green. So I'll fill in this. So it just depends on like what you're going for. If you want the stark black outline, if you, you know, like it with a little bit more of a neutral tone. Layer that with purple. Why not? A little darker. So yeah, you can outline with the sepia. And these are 0.3. So they're a little bit finer nib, but they're not um, overly thick either. And there's the example with the black. So different look. And then I do want to show. Whoop. So this, um, this drawing, coloring this could take an entire class. Um, it's a pretty big size, but this girl is actually available on our website. And I know Nate shared this link like five minutes ago. Um, so you can definitely download her and color her, what you, whatever you want. Um, but yeah, just make sure you print it on marker paper. Um, and yeah, I outlined the bubbles with the black um, 0.3 multi-liner pen. I outlined her skin tones and her hair with the sepia 0.3. So I'll show that even closer. So you can see when I outlined her skin, that's definitely a brown, that's not a black. And then I outlined everything else with the black. And I color her hair, kind of an unconventional color um, with uh, the purple and the two pink colors in the set. I also just kind of spontaneously added color blotches into the bubbles since bubbles are very, um, what's the word, just have so many different colors going on with them due to the reflections and whatnot. So there's no right answer with coloring bubbles. Um, and there's kind of like my water as well. You can stick with just blue and green if you want. I went in with way more colors, um, definitely more of like a fantasy scene. But yeah, she is available to download and color uh, as many times as you'd like from our website. And again, I only use the colors inside the set and the pens, which is awesome. And I also colored this. This can be downloaded from the website as well. When you download it, I've got a bunch of different sheets here to show you guys. 
when you download it, it looks like this. Um, I haven't cut it out from an eight and a half by 11 sheet, but I made a little border for it. So I knew where to cut it. Um, yeah, so it's empty. It looks like this. I colored it with my first Copic and I added some kind of windy spirals to it with the multi-liner pen that's included in the set. Um, and I chose to put yellow as the center and alternated between pinks and purples with my green, um, blue and purple. So those are kind of like a, a flower interpretation. Um, and that's just what it looks like comes out the printer. And again, these are free. These are on our website. So definitely recommend it. Um, and then the one with the fish, um, I just wanted to make sure I got through the everything in the booklet, but this can also be downloaded from our website. I definitely think that the colors inside this set would fit this pretty well. Um, so yeah, those are just recommendations and these are all available on our website for free. So just make sure when you're using your home printer, um, put marker paper in before you print, definitely makes a difference. And so, yeah, I think we went through pretty much everything in the booklet. Um, the one thing that I didn't get to explain was the shadows, um, but it does tell you, you know, make sure you look at the sun, what time of day it is, so you know the shadow will follow. Um, I would definitely recommend using the blue violet um, to add the shadows for these particular colors. Um, but all of this information and more can be found on our website. So, um, yeah, I think that's about it. I definitely recommend this booklet and this set though, especially for a beginner or someone that just needs a little bit more guidance um, for using Copic. Let me bring in my finished pieces here. So we've got this one, we've got this one. This was our practice sheet at the beginning. And yeah. I think that's about it. I think the last thing is, um, if there's any more questions, I'm not seeing any pop up, but I really do, do hope that this class was helpful and did teach some more tips and tricks. Um, again, definitely recommended the chow marker. It does sell at a cheaper price point than the sketch. So if you're also a beginner, this is less intimidating than the Copic sketch. So I definitely recommend it for that reason as well. Um, but yeah, and if you want to check out more tips and tricks from us, um, our Instagram handle is Copic Official US. Um, Michael's stores will also have this class up on their YouTube within a few days. So if I talk too quickly or you just need some more help with something, um, it, the recording should be up on YouTube. Um, and I think that's about it. Yeah, if you have Sketch and Chow, will they blend? Yes, it's the same marker. So um, uh, I don't think I have another example here, but basically the only difference is, um, is that the marker looks a little bit different and the caps will look different, but the nibs are the exact same. So if you have your Chow and you have your Sketch, it's going to blend just fine. So no worries there, same two nibs. Um, yeah, I think, I think that's about it. No more questions coming in the chat. So we greatly appreciate you guys joining us today in the middle of a busy holiday season and um, definitely look forward to teaching some more classes next year. So if there's no more questions in the chat, um, I think that's it. And thank you guys so much for joining. Until next time. <laughs>